How would you test an invention for the International Space Station before going to the space station? Or for the moon, before going to the moon? It's not so easy to simulate a space environment here on Earth. Gravity is always pulling us down. That's why NASA uses suborbital flights to test new space technologies and experiments a little closer to Earth. When something goes around the Earth, it's in orbit. When a rocket goes up and comes back down without going around the Earth, it's called a suborbital rocket. At the peak of flight, a suborbital rocket goes beyond the edge of space, where it experiences a few minutes of microgravity, sometimes referred to as zero-g or weightlessness. Suborbital rockets can be small, or they can be big. Some have a cabin pressurized with air, and some do not. Either way, they use rocket engines and a lot of rocket fuel to fly payloads to the edge of space and bring them back down. Payload is just a fancy word for important stuff that gets sent to space, like your NASA TechRise experiment. Before flight, your experiment will be put inside the rocket and plugged in to receive power and data from the vehicle. And that data is really important, because you'll need to use that data to tell your experiment to start at just the right time. During the ride on the rocket, that data stream will tell your flight experiment about the excitement of what's going on. Like how fast the rocket is accelerating, or how high up it is. Your experiment will also get messages when key events happen, like when microgravity starts. And when microgravity starts, the three minutes of scientific fun begins. Everything inside your payload will become weightless and start to float, just like astronauts on the space station. And it's go time. Not only will you want to run your microgravity experiment, you'll want to take photos or video too, so that when it comes back down to Earth, your experiment can be mailed back to you, and then you can see what happened when it was in space.